For question 5, part A, we need to remember the median is the middle value. So if the total frequency of high school A is 200, you can picture the first 100 values and then the second 100 values. The median is going to be the average between the 100 and 101st value. Um, so they gave us a pretty detailed histogram. And looking at it closely, I, I think the frequency of this bin right here is 46. And this one is 48. So these two numbers doesn't get us to 100, but this next one would certainly contain the 100 and 101st value. So the median is somewhere in here. So I'll write median. Um, over here, uh, the frequency of this first bar is 79. Then we have a 34. And let's see. This high school actually had 221 in it. So the median is going to be, if we split this in half, we have 110 lower values, 110 upper values, and you have one value right in the middle. That's gonna be the median there. So we need to find the 111th value. So we have 79 here and 34. That gets us to 113. So we know the median actually lives in this bar. Okay, since one of the medians is 6 and one is 7, the median of 6 has to be in this bar, which goes from 4 up to 6. This right here goes from 7 up to 9, actually. So this school A must have the median of 7, and school B must have the median of 6. So we'll say school A has a median of 7, since both the 100 and 101st values are contained in the 789 teaching year bin. And school B has a median of 6, since the 111th value, which is actually the median, is in the 456 bin. One question you might have is, how do we know this is the 456 bin and not the, say, 567 bin? Well, the minimum value for teaching year is 1. And we can see that there's no data to the left of the 1s in both of these histograms. So this must be the one, two, three, and this must be the four, five, six, and et cetera bins. So we know these axes labels are the lower limits for each bin. Now in part B, we know the sample size for high school A was 200, and the stem of the problem tells us that the mean was 8.2. We're given uh, some additional information. There's 18 teachers who weren't included, and they have a mean of 2.5. And we're going to try to combine these into a new mean. So let's think about how means are actually calculated. The mean is the sum of the teaching years divided by the sample size. So originally, this 8.2 was calculated by adding up all the teaching years and dividing by 200. So if we multiply both sides by 200, that will actually tell us the combined sum of the teaching years, which turns out to be 1,640. Let's do the same thing for this sample of 18. Their mean was 2.5, so the sum of their teaching years is going to be 2.5 times 18, which is 45. Now if we combine these two sums and we combine their sample sizes, we can calculate the new mean. Now, if this new mean actually represents the true mean, because everyone's data is included, we might actually be able to use mu here instead of x bar. It's not a sample anymore. It's actually the entire population. So when you add these up and then divide, you end up with a overall mean of about 7.729. For part C, they tell us the standard deviation for high school B is 7.2. And we know the mean is 8.2, and we're trying to calculate the probability of a randomly selected teacher being within one standard deviation of this mean. Now, you might be tempted to use the empirical rule here and say that, oh, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. But that rule works for normally distributed data. This is clearly not normally distributed, so we can't use that rule. So what do we do? Well, this mean of 8.2 is somewhere in this bin right here, the 789 bin. So 
let's start by just adding one standard deviation and subtracting one standard deviation from this mean to come up with some sort of an interval of interest. So 8.2 plus or minus one standard deviation, 7.2, gives us this interval of uh, one to 15.4. Okay, this is nice that we have a one here. Um, because we have that nice clean cutoff here at 1. So where would 15.4 lie? Actually, all the data is integers, so there would be no 15.4. So really what we're interested in is it being from 1 to 15, since 16 wouldn't lie in this interval. That means every teacher within one standard deviation of the mean is in one of these bins right here. We already have the frequencies from the first two bins from part A. If we calculate the frequency of these other three bins, then we'll know the exact number of teachers within one standard deviation of the mean. So it turns out 189 of the teachers have a teaching year between 1 and 15. So if we divide that 189 by the total number of teachers at high school B, 221, we get 0.8552. As you can see, that number is very different than what the empirical rule would give us, 0.68. Now it says justify your answer, so now that we have the probability, let's focus on justifying the answer. We can say one standard deviation from 8.2 would be teaching years from 1 to 15.4. Since the teaching years are only integers, this represents teachers in their first to 15th year. There are 189 of these teachers out of the total 221 teachers. So the probability is 189 out of 221, or 0.8552. If you liked my explanation of this problem, you might also like my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. The book has 100 problems, and every one of them has a YouTube video that explains every single step. So problem number five from this year's AP reminds me of uh, problem nine in the book. This is another problem where we use a histogram to make some calculations. I'll link to this video for this problem in the description, and you can see another example of my explanations.